Alright guys, so today we're going to work on port forwarding. Uh, port forwarding is also known as a static NAT um, in the watch guard. Anyways, uh, go ahead and get logged into your Firebox. We're going to be doing the Fireware web interface first here. So once you're logged into the Firebox, um, on the left hand side you're going to go to the uh, firewall option there. It's going to expand your menu. You have quite a few options here. Before we can add the firewall policy to allow the port, we need to add the SNAT for the device specifically. Um, different in the web interface and the watch guard system manager interface. So in this case you have to add the SNAT first before you can do the actual firewall rule. Um, I have this firebox set up to dimension so I had to unlock it up here if you've seen me click that lock. Once you're on the SNAT page you can go ahead and click add. Um, you're going to go ahead and name it. I'm going to name it terminal server just as an example I don't actually have a terminal server hosted here it's going to be a static NAT type not a server load balancing type um, then you're going to click add again on this second page it's going to bring up the option here if you have an optional interface configured you would pick that if you want it to be any of your external interfaces you could pick that option, but in most cases, we're just going to pick external. And then it asks you for the internal IP address. This is where you would put in the case of your terminal server. Um, just using an example, I don't actually have one set up again. I'm going to use 1.3. You can go ahead and click OK then. Now that you see it set up, you've got your name you've got your SNAT member, you can go ahead and click Save. Once it is saved, um, you'll see it listed here. If you ever wanted to go back and edit it or delete it, you could on the same SNAT page under Firewall. Now we can add the policy to allow the forwarding to go through. So we're going to click Firewall Policies right here on the left-hand side. Um, this is the page of all the firewall policies currently in place. Um, you're going to add a new one, so click Add Policy on the top. Um, there's two different types of firewall policies. There's packet filter policies and there's proxy policies. The packet filter policies it doesn't do all of the same features as the proxy policies. Like if you do the HTTP um, packet filter policy here, it wouldn't be able to do the gateway antivirus scan, uh, the intrusion prevention still does work, but you lose a lot of capability. Um, so what we're going to do, because it's a terminal server, and we don't want to do you know, antivirus scanning or any of that, just intrusion prevention, we're going to pick packet filter, there is a default um, terminal server or you know RDP uh, filter policy built in here, but we're not going to use that because we use a different port. So we're going to go ahead and make a custom one. And that's not even in this list. What you do is you click the custom bullet and you're going to click add. And you're going to add a new policy based on your port in the following screens. So, for the policy name, I'm going to once go ahead and name it Terminal Server again. We're going to make it a packet filter policy again, not a proxy. Now we're going to click Add under Protocols to specify what you know port or port range. In this case, it's just a single port. We know RDP works on TCP, so we're going to leave it as TCP. And the port number we're going to use is 3396. Then you can go ahead and click OK. 
and you'll see it's added here. Go ahead and click Save. Then on the following screen here, once this is done, uh, you'll see you have a custom policy, terminal server, and it gives you just shows you the port and the protocol. You can go ahead and click Add Policy, and it's going to bring you to the screen. It's going to name it the default one you made. We're going to leave it there. Make sure it's checked to say Enable. Now here's the part where you're going to configure you know, where it's coming from, where it's going to. So in this case, we're going to remove the from any trusted because it's going to come from either a specific address or an external address. If you know the host address it's going to come from, you can put it in here. Um, you can also you know, do um, an alias if you wanted to, and you could put a name of which aliases you want it to come from. Um, if you're going to just leave it open to the world, which what we're going to do in this case, we're going to leave the member type as an alias, and we're going to set it to any external. So that means any address it's coming from, it will allow the traffic to come in um, on this specific port. And then two, what we're going to do is remove the any external. We're going to add. And here, instead of an alias or a host, we're going to pick static NAT member. And we've only got one set up that we did set up earlier. You pick that, then click OK. So this policy is going to allow traffic on 3396 from anywhere to this specific device. Okay, We're going to leave intrusion prevention on. And we're not going to change anything else. We're going to leave everything else default, then click Save. Okay, after that's done, it's going to take us to the firewall policies page. And we'll see it's added in here. There it is, the terminal server. Um, that's the, the type of policy, because we made a packet filter policy coming from anywhere, allowed to this specific IP, and the port it's allowed on. That's how you do port forwarding. You can do it for any port, um, anything you need to forward, like a DVR, security system, you know, etc. And that's it. Thanks. Bye.